All right, let's start with India now. The world's largest and most vibrant democracy is set to go to polls in less than six months from now. National elections in India are a grand event. Close to a billion people are expected to cast their vote next year. This is more people than all of Europe combined. So the 2024 national elections will not just be a key event for India. The ripples of the mammoth exercise will be felt across the globe. After all, India is not just a massive population. It's also a $3 trillion economy, which is among the world's top five at the moment. Who will get to be at the commanding heights in New Delhi will be decided in the elections next year. Going by the events over the weekend, the incumbent government led by Narendra Modi and his Bharatiya Janata Party remain immensely popular among the masses. The party now is in power in most of northern India. Remember, these states have a considerable say when it comes to deciding the government at the centre. The BJP won most of the Lok Sabha states in last elections from this very belt. The recent polls show the party and the Prime Minister in a comfortable position this time as well. Moreover, the opposition does not seem to be in order at the moment. The India Alliance, a coalition of about 28 parties, are still far from presenting a united front. Exhibit A. Two days ago, the Indian National Congress called a meeting of the Alliance on December 6th. But key leaders of regional parties decided to skip the meeting. The Chief Minister of West Bengal, Mamta Banerjee, said that she and her regional Trinamool Congress party would be skipping the meeting due to prior commitments. Next is the former Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav, who heads the regional Samajwadi Party. He has publicly criticized Congress for its arrogance in not recognizing the role of regional parties. He was also reported to skip the alliance meet. Now, more reports show that the Chief Minister of Bihar, Nitish Kumar, has also decided against attending the meeting. The list does not end there. Even Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin would have reportedly skipped the meeting given a cyclone battering the state. You see, the Indian National Congress is the single largest opposition party at the centre at the moment and is positioning itself as BJP's main challenger in the 2024 general elections. But key alliance members are publicly giving a cold shoulder to the Congress, which sends out a message which the people are watching carefully. Congress has reportedly deferred the meeting for later this month. With less than six months remaining, the BJP is still at the height of its popularity. And experts say that this is the time for the India Alliance to course correct. Now, to give us more insights on this story, we are being joined by Sandeep Ghosh from Kochi, Kerala. He is an author and political commentator. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. I want to ask you, do you think the latest defeat of Congress in the state elections has put the entire India alliance in a tricky position? All right, Mr. Ghosh, we seem to be having an audio issue with you at the moment. We'll try to reconnect with our guest, Sandeep Ghosh, who was trying to join us live from Kochi. Now, for those of you who are joining us on this broadcast now, we are talking about the India Alliance being at the moment. All right, we are being told that Mr. Ghosh has joined us back. Mr. Ghosh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, great. I, uh, if you heard my question, I was trying to ask you, do you think the latest defeat in the state elections by Congress has put the entire India alliance in sort of a jeopardy? It's not a jeopardy, but I, I expect a lot of readjustments and recalibrations to happen going forward. You know, they try to uh, put together the alliance when I think it was a bit premature. It was more a... Uh, statement of intent or shall i even say not even intent it was wishful thinking when bringing people together 
they thought by that they'll be able to ratchet up some sentiment anti bjp consolidation but it was if you see theoretically uh, uh, it had a major uh, fallacy in it because the whole any alliance would base uh, be based on a uh, you know premise of give and take you know adjustments so people have to be now when you're talking of regional parties and uh, say in a state like west bengal which you just alluded to where congress doesn't have any presence now if uh, prenumal congress has to give up some seats to congress what do they get in exchange uh, because prenumal does not have presence in the uh, rest of india uh, and therefore what that uh, that do if uh, therefore essentially prenumal which has an x number of presence in the uh, center they will be just giving away the seats without anything in return and that will weaken their bargaining position even within that alliance so uh, there were a lot of i think uh, um, uh, they didn't uh, there was no real thinking through they felt that bringing them together that will sort of cobble up uh, you know uh, uh, gather a momentum of uh, anti bjp sentiment people will think there is an option and therefore it will change the dynamics now all that has come uh, you know uh, uh, unraveled uh, far too soon with these elections right and so for there will be and uh, only thing i'll add is you see each one today are concerned about their own survival in like everywhere else in life in politics also the shelf life of people have shrunk so a lot of the older leaders are pretty close to their sell by date and therefore they don't they can't really take a chance of doing something now and being out of power for 5 years by then they'll be history they'll be irrelevant so people will do something by which either they cut their losses or they try to make uh, the most of a bad bargain right speaking of that so what kind of course correction do you expect not just congress but the entire india alliance to make in the coming 5 to 6 months see first of all congress's biggest problem is it cannot think of itself other than being the Uh, uh main opposition party the numero uno or you know not even the first among equals they want to be de facto um uh, the leader and therefore while they say no we are all uh, equal we'll decide on the prime minister face later on but they immediately start projecting say rahul gandhi as a prime minister in waiting now they have an existential crisis you know bjp for example uh they would have factored in both possibilities of the winning or losing these uh, state assembly election they could have uh, they would have had their script ready had they lost more states what would have been their script what would have been their strategy now that they won they also had a script ready for that but you look at uh, congress congress is totally at a loss even um, how to respond to this thing because they just simply assumed after the karnataka victory and the so called a uh, bharat jodo yatra that they were on a roll so right now they uh, don't have an answer there is all kind of contradictory responses from their own people somebody is blaming evm somebody right. is blaming regional leaders uh, somebody uh, uh, saying that it's not south divide uh, uh, and and the rest of it so uh, they are at a loss so they will have to at this hardly two months to go you know between now and when you'll have the model code of conduct and the elections declared uh, so you might see therefore a lot of uh, re um, uh, uh, you know alignments configurations you may find many more of these uh, what's happened say in maharashtra of a shiv sena or a ncp that kind of uh, uh, you know reconfigurations happening even telangana uh, don't be surprised before 2024 if a brs comes into some kind of a tacit or open adjustment with bjp for their own survival so you'll see a lot more of these things you you make some very interesting points there uh, mr ghosh thank you so much for joining us here on we are completely out of time but thank you so much for giving us all thank those you. insights my, my pleasure thank you